Hello guys, um, NEET PG 2022 results have been announced and a lot of you must be in a dilemma. Uh, a lot of you might have choices, might have your own preferences in choosing the speciality, uh, but a lot of you might be uh, confused which speciality to take. But many of you might have this particular thing. Do I go in for an MS or DMP? Some of you might be really lucky, you might be in the top few hundred ranks where you might be getting into the top most government colleges, Madras Medical College, uh, MAMC, uh, KEM. This video is not for you guys because you guys have are the cream and you guys have the choice of your seats. This guys was, uh, this is for people who are in the middle, you know, who are kind of uh, confused. Uh, they're in the 10,000 ranks, 7,000 ranks. Do I go in for a general surgery seat at a decent medical college or do I go for an excellent DNB? Or do I, you know, settle down with a private medical college or do I go in for a DNB? So uh, this video, we're going to look into those particular issues and we're also going to, you know, uh, kind of discuss a little bit about the six year DNB courses as well. And uh, I have to introduce myself. I am Nayak Rengen. I'm a surgeon. Uh, I did my MBBS from Kilpak Medical College. I did my general surgery from Madras Medical College. I'm also an MRCS uh, qualified surgeon. Uh, I am uh, did it from the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh. And uh, I'm currently doing my MCH in pediatric surgery at SMS Jaipur. Uh, at the outset, I would like to tell that uh, I am extremely fortunate to be a surgeon. And if given a chance, I would be a surgeon over and over again. Uh, it's an excellent speciality. The speciality where you get a chance to cure patients uh, with your touch and you're able to bring out the instantaneous results. I don't think anything beats the feeling of a patient in severe pain when you, you know, do an IMD incision and drainage. The pain relief you get. Uh, I think I think I think that cannot be expressed in just words. Uh, and when you do major surgeries, more complex stuff, and patients come out well, uh, you definitely uh, do feel that satisfaction. So let's get to the topic. So today's discussion is uh, MS or DNP. Uh, so talking about MS, MS is offered in MCI recognized MCI or rather what we call as NMC right now, recognized institutions, uh, medical colleges usually. Uh, it can be either government or private. Government can be uh, Calcutta Medical College, uh, NRS, uh, Madras Medical College, Kilpox, Stanley, KEM, MAMC, Sadar Jam. These are all government medical colleges. Private medical colleges can be Ramachandra, Manipal, uh, Chetanad, uh, Sharda. So these are all private medical colleges. These are all uh, NMC recognized, and uh, the cost of the course might vary. You know, it might it's literally going to be free in a government medical college. And if you're uh, getting even through NEET PG in a private medical college, the costs are enormous. DNB DNB is offered by institutions uh, recognized. Uh, not by the NMC, but by the NBE, National Board of Examinations, which is based out of Delhi. So it can be a corporate hospital. Apollo has its DNB programs, Fortis has its DNB programs, Max has its DNB programs, Medanta has one. Uh, or it can be trust hospitals, poor trust hospitals, or trusts run by the railway, railway hospitals, very excellent hospitals. Some of the district hospitals also offer uh, uh, DNB programs. They are also government institutions, but they do have DNB programs. There can be specialized uh, single specialty um, hospitals too. Uh, Arvindai Hospital, Shankar Netralaya, which offer excellent programs in ophthalmology. So the equivalence of MDMS with DNB has been you know, emphasized by a lot of people. They both are essentially equivalent. In no way, I repeat, in no way a DNB is less than a person who has done an MD or an MS. Uh, the June 2017 uh, government ruling also reaffirms that fact. It says that the MD and M, uh, MD or an MS and DNB are equivalent, are same if done in MCI recognized institute, which is rare because some government medical colleges do offer a DNB, or in a hospital uh, uh, where there are more than 500 beds. But if it doesn't fulfill this particular criteria, they are equivalent if you uh, do an SR shift for uh, one year in a government medical college. This is exclusively for teaching teaching posts. For an MCH, for super speciality, it doesn't make a difference at all. In fact, the DNP exams are recognized worldwide because there's just, because you are uh, uh, taking the exam in a place uh, in, uh, which is not your internal, where your internal examiner is not there. So the exams are supposed to be impartial and there's a huge value to the DNP degree. One big advantage of pursuing your MS or an MD before DNB is the fact that you are allowed to take your DNB degree after completing your 
MS or MD. And uh, so let's get into the specifics. So we're going to be talking about surgery. Uh, for surgery, there's a, a huge misconception. A lot of people will tell you never take a DNB. MS is the only option. You know, repeat back if you're getting a DNB. I would say that's absolute nonsense. You know, I don't want to use uh, worse terms because YouTube is going to ban this video. But I would say make your own decisions while taking your seat. Do not just listen to people who take, including me. You should take a decision which your family supports, which you should take based on your opinions of your friends, the place where you want to stay, your opinion of your girlfriend, boyfriend, or who matters to you. So uh, it's a decision which you will have to make and make an informed choice. We are going to be looking at certain parameters over here. We are going to be looking at hands-on. We are going to be looking at academics. We are going to be looking at the bond conditions. Uh, we are going to be looking at work environment and the examination pattern. So let's come to hands-on. Hands-on in surgery can be grossly uh, subdivided into uh, four uh, uh, parameters. Uh, one is the septic caseload, the emergency caseload, elective caseload, and the super specialty hand -down. So septic cases, septic cases are your diabetic foot, your infections, uh, your necrotizing fasciitis. Very essential for a general surgeon, and I believe that good surgeons are crafted in the septic ward, where you have the freedom to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, take care of a patient, and you can see. Uh, the patient becoming better, a bad necrotizing fasciitis will debride and bring out uh, the uh, pink granulation tissue. I don't think anything uh, gives you a better satisfaction. Septic cases, government medical colleges have a huge advantage. You will be seeing a lot more septic cases, but a lot of people tend to you know view that as a disadvantage. A lot of people don't like to get their hands dirty. They don't, they don't want to do the septic cases. But I have a differing opinion. So that is a small disadvantage in a DNB setup in a corporate hospital. But uh, it kind of depends on which hospital. Some of the trust hospitals do have a good septic case load. And in many of these DNB programs, you might be the only PG. You might not have 10 co -PGs. So you might be dealing with a lot more septic cases than sometimes a government uh, uh, hospital. So for example, if you're the only PG and there are 10 septic cases a week, then you're going to be seeing 10 septic cases a week, which is a huge number. A similar uh, a government hospital which is 100 septic cases a week and there are 20 PGs, so the workload is going to get distributed. Emergencies. Emergencies uh, can be general surgical emergencies uh, or you know trauma. Trauma is usually uh, confined to the big hospitals where you have uh, more than 500 beds where you have a neurosurgery set up. In smaller hospitals, trauma exposure is really poor and that's something very sad. This is true of even smaller government medical colleges. Um, where you know a neurosurgeon may not be available or a specialty uh, care may not be available. You might need a cardiac thoracic surgeon for certain cases of thoracic trauma. Uh, general surgical emergencies, perforations, appendicitis, all these are usually better in government medical colleges. Even in some of the best trust hospitals, say Gandhara, they might have an excellent elective exposure, but your uh, emergency exposure is slightly less. Is it a disadvantage? Uh, I think that's a disadvantage you can you know kind of overcome by working in a government hospital after your MS. But uh, this is something which you should take into consideration. In corporate hospitals, the emergency load is definitely going to be lesser than uh, government medical colleges. Uh, in, uh, in terms of electives, electives, uh, government medical colleges, usually most government medical colleges have an excellent elective case load and that should be uh, helpful for you to learn a lot of stuff. You will be seeing hernias, you will be seeing uh, a decent amount of laparoscopy, you will be seeing um, thyroid, breast, uh, basic urology, and uh, a lot of other stuff. Uh, also, sebaceous is the smaller ones too. In a corporate hospital, the biggest advantage is you will see a lot of laparoscopy, you will see an excellent amount of advanced procedures. Even in some of the top most government colleges, I'm really sad to say that the amount of laparoscopy exposure is very low, very pathetic. And I think that's a pain which a lot of surgeons who have trained in government medical colleges have felt that because once you go out into the real world, the world expects you to do, do a simple laparoscopic appendicectomy or a cholecystectomy. And I think the government has kind of failed all of us when they don't train government college doctors, even in the top places, even uh, for people who have got in the 200 rank, rank 300. So they don't get enough laparoscopic exposure, that's sad. But in private hospitals, usually you have an excellent amount of laparoscopic exposure. Um, uh, and I think I think that's that's great. Uh, uh, and the next part is super specialty.
exposure. Super specialized exposure varies from place to place. Uh, there are good government medical colleges with excellent super specialty departments, but your professor might say, Oh, what are you going to learn in the super specialty department? And he might say, Don't even, you know, uh, he, he wouldn't even allow you to go there. That has happened to a lot of people. Same thing in private hospitals, too. You are, your, 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 your boss might be too busy, you know, uh, you know, he might, you know, want to engage you too much. And there's only one piece you're too busy, you'll be too reluctant to let you go and work under a super specialist. And I think that's really sad. That is something which kind of uh, gives you an overall perspective about what you want to do. Uh, as a lot of us uh, aspire only for GI surgery or onco surgery, post MS, and that's because we are exposed only to gastrointestinal or cancer cases or laparoscopy during an MS period. Uh, better exposure to pediatric surgery, cardiac surgery, plastic surgery, neurosurgery would uh, would mean that your horizons widen and you're able to know what you actually really want, rather than you know get into what you been exposed to only academics. I'm really sorry to say, but overall in this part of the world, in, in India, in our subcontinent, academics is really poor. Journal clubs, seminars, case presentation, these are very important. And uh, sometimes you really don't get it. And surgery, you, you can't expect it to. In medicine, it becomes very important because a lot of it has to be spent, a lot of time has to be spent on books. I won't say that, you know, in surgery, you don't have to read books. You will have to read books, but you can't expect good academics either in government hospitals or in DMV institutes. And I think that's really sad. Uh, in some of the places in the central institutes where uh, academics are excellent, you will publish a lot, but you will find that the hands on is low. So we, we really don't have much of a choice when it comes to academics and I think that's really sad. Thesis is compulsory for both uh, M uh, MDMS and uh, DNB and I think that's something which you'll have to kind of remember. Uh, uh, and thesis requirements are very strict with NB. Uh, NB expects you to do a good amount of good work with the, uh, your thesis. Bond. The biggest advantage of DNB is that there is no bond and at this point of time, you will think that, oh, yeah, what am I? What one is nothing, you know, one work one or two years after MS. Uh, but you will realize that you might want to work in a different place. You might not have had good exposure in laparoscopy in a government medical college, and you might want to learn laparoscopy, but your bond does not allow you to learn that. And I think that's really sad. So, I would personally prefer to do your general surgery degree in a place where there is no bond because it gives you freedom and I think freedom is invaluable, I think it's beautiful uh, and uh, many of the government medical colleges in Delhi don't have a bond but a bond is almost compulsory in every place uh, we'll try to do a video uh, on what are the bond conditions at different places uh, so uh, that's something we can you know uh, uh, you can kind of expect in the next few days uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the work environment I say this with a lot of sadness but Surgical work environments are really poor. Uh, surgeons are abused. Surgery residents are abused. Surgery residents are mis uh, uh, mistreated in many places. I won't say it's universal. I won't say it is. Uh, uh, it, it's we are treated badly in every place, but that's the truth in many places in this country, and that is a fact even in corporate hospitals. One advantage in corporate hospitals that you might not have to push stretches. In government medical college, many of us have pushed stretches. Many of us have done many, a lot of menial work. We have had to share the patients. No work is menial or no work is beneath us. But the amount of physical stress it causes, physical and mental stress, menial work causes, it takes our time away from scut work. It takes our time away from academics. And I feel that you know, the entire system has to be overhauled and more paramedics have to be involved in doing stunt work and making surgery a better place. A lot of brilliant guys, they would ask me, I, I, a lot of my interns, I ask them, why, why are you not taking up surgery? And they would say, sir, I don't want to live a dog's life. And I think that's very really sad. We are discouraging some of the best minds from entering into surgery. Exam pattern, uh, both have theory exams and practical exams. Uh, your Biggest advantage in MS is that your practical exam will be conducted by an internal. It can also be a disadvantage if your internal doesn't like you. In DNP, that's not a factor at all. Uh, you'll be taking up your exam in a different city too. Uh, the examiners will be completely unknown to you. They will be evaluating you. Uh, pass percentages in DNP have increased significantly. Uh, right now, we are you know almost touching 70% pass percentage in general surgery examinations. Uh, I know of centers where there have been no failures for the past four or five years, and I think that's great. Um, 
the DNP exams are a little high standard. You will have to spend a lot of time reading. Ultimately, uh, choose a place which you believe uh, 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 suits your temperament, suits your personality. Uh, ultimately, I don't know if you guys have much of a choice. Uh, but if you do have a list of institutions, you can put them in your comments, and I can I can maybe help them order it for you, uh, or you can you know um, um, uh, mail the team at info at search, uh, dot com, or you know you can even get in touch through my personal email id denied dot at uh, searches dot com, uh, where uh, we can interact through email and uh, maybe we'll be able to solve your queries. Uh, any doubts you have, uh, you can put them in the comments, uh, and please do subscribe to the Searchers channel. Uh, we'll be coming up with more videos which are insightful, and uh, I think uh, I hope that this video was useful to you. And uh, really hope that you guys become good productive surgeons who are in love with surgery. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good day.